ScreenMeet is a solution that delivers better, real-time online experiences by elevating engagement with customer service or sales personnel. ScreenMeet's video chat solution allows agents to seamlessly start a co-browse or remote support session with customers to help resolve any issues, whether that's completing a checkout process on a website or resolving an IT issue with full remote control. ScreenMeet has it covered. ScreenMeet can be used as a standalone solution or integrated with your existing CRM, such as Salesforce, ServiceNow, Microsoft Dynamics, and Zendesk, so your teams can truly work with one tool. ScreenMeet's goal is to provide the best customer experience possible in these times of a virtual world. In this demo, I'll show you the customer experience for engaging with the sales or customer service agent, and then show the agent experience and tools they have to support the customer. We'll start with the video chat and then go to co-browse right from that video chat. Next, we'll take a look at the remote support experience and how you can connect to a user's desktop or mobile and take control to fix any issue. Let's get started. In this scenario, our customer will submit a chat to a website that will be picked up by a customer service agent. Once in chat, the customer will ask to speak to the customer service agent about an item on the website. The agent will respond and send a link to the customer to join a video chat. The customer will click on the join call button and enter the video chat. You'll notice that this is browser based and no application is required for the customer, even if joining from a mobile device. From here, the agent can discuss the options with the customer and if determined a co-browse session is required to help the customer through the process, can start the co-browse session directly from that video chat session. Once the agent has created the co-browse session, it paste the link into the chat in the video session. The customer will then click to accept the co-browse session and joins the session. Anything that's displayed within that red frame is, will be visible to the agent when they join the session. The customer and agent can continue the video chat conversation throughout the whole experience. In this example, I'm going to minimize the video chat window so we can focus solely on the co-browse session for demo purposes. The agent can annotate on the customer screen with a highlighter to guide them through the web experience and also use a laser pointer as well. There is also an option to take remote control so the agent can actually navigate on behalf of the customer and actually drive the website for them. A couple of things I wanted to highlight on here is if you look at that password field here, you'll see that that is outlined with the red frame and any data that's inputted here by the customer will not be shared to the agent. So you could mask any field on a website, maybe social security, credit card, account number, all of that personally identifiable information can be masked from the agent. Now let's take a look at the agent experience. So you'll see here that the agent experience is in a browser. So again, no application is required for the agent. It's purely browser based. And on the right hand side is the tool panel. So this is where I selected the highlighter and laser pointer and requested remote control earlier on in the demo. You will also see there is an option on that toolbar to do a video chat. So we started this co-browse session from a video chat, but you can also start a video chat from a co-browse session. It just depends on the best experience to fit your processes and for the customer. 
You can also display system information, which gives a brief overview of the customer's operating system and browser. There's a file transfer facility that can be bi-directional or just agent to customer, customer to agent, or disabled. All of the features that you see on this toolbar can be enabled or disabled. I want to show you now how the agent started the co-browse session from within the video chat. By clicking on the meeting settings button, the agent can click on the link and then start the new session, which creates a code and a link that the agent can paste into the chat and send across to the customer. The agent can also view the participants in the video chat as you can actually have up to five attendees, either through a desktop or mobile device. There are also some settings for the video chat, things like participants needing to ask permission to join the meeting, whether you want to record the meeting or not, switch the main focus of the video to whoever is talking, Flip the camera image, often images displayed on the webcam are mirrored, so you can flip that. And also change background settings. So either blur the background, add a color, which could be a corporate color, or a logo as a backdrop. All participants have the ability to mute themselves, turn on or off their webcam, and also go into the device settings to select the relevant input and output devices for use in the meeting. To end the session, simply click leave session. If you're running ScreenMeet from one of our integration partners, all session data will be written back to the object record this will include any recording or file transfer. Those files can be stored in the CRM. And you will also have an audit trail of events that occurred during the session, including URLs visited during the co-browse session. In the second demo, we'll take a look at a remote support session. So again, we have the customer submitting a chat to a customer service agent this time the customer will request help on their PC and the agent will send the join call button back to the customer. When the customer clicks on the join call button, they'll enter the video chat session. Once connected with the agent, the customer can describe the details of the issue to the agent and then the agent can determine to host a remote support session and start the session from within the video chat. They'll then paste the link in the video session and the customer will click on the link and a small download will be delivered to the customer's machine. Now let's take a look at the agent experience. The customer has joined the session and as with the co-browse session, it's running within the browser. So there is no application for the agent to install or required to run the support session. You also still have the video chat available whilst in the support session. I'll just minimize that again for the purposes of this demo to show you the full experience of remote support. On the right hand side, you'll see the agent toolbar where all your tool set is. So we have features like Windows tools, which are essentially agent productivity tools, where there are shortcuts to things like running programs and features. You know, if you wanted to uninstall or change a program, we also have other things like reboot into safe mode and reboot and reconnect. This will connect you back into the session with the agent to prevent the customer needing to start another session which is particularly useful if you installed something or made a change on the user's machine that requires a reboot. 
There are other features on the toolbar, such as being able to copy paste from remote device. You can take a screenshot, download that to the agent machine, upload to the customer's machine, or actually add it to the case to view at the end of the session. And that file can be stored in the CRM if you have integration or in the Screamy console, which we'll take a look at after. We also gather some system information, which is really the details of the hardware, the manufacturer, operating system installed. And again, that information will be tracked to the remote support session. There's also some viewing enhancements settings there are also some system performance tuning settings where you can reduce the frame rates per second or the stream resolution. So if you're in a low bandwidth setting, you can configure those to have a better remote support experience. You can also invite third party agents. So if you're in a tier one, tier two support environment or external agencies sometimes help for support, you can create a URL and paste that to uh, another party to join the session. And they can, they can also have remote control. And there's a file transfer feature as well. And as with Cobras, this could be bi-directional, uh, just agent to customer, customer to agent, and you can blacklist certain file extensions. And when you do transfer a file, the customer will be prompted to accept this file so again, with sort of security uh, in the file transfer in mind, the customer needs to accept. This file can also be attached to the incident or case in your CRM system or within the ScreenMe console. And finally, we have chat. So if you've left the video chat, maybe it's a particularly long issue and the customer is no longer there, you can send a chat to inform them that you've completed the job. When you leave the session, the data will be written back to uh, either your CRM platform or the ScreenMeet console, depending on your particular installation. Let's remind ourselves how the agent started the remote support session from within the video chat. The agent went into the meeting tools clicked on the link and went to start the remote support session. You'll notice they have options when starting the session. This is all configurable. So do they want to record the session, start in view only or with full remote control and start with admin privileges. If the session is started in view only and without admin privileges, the agent can escalate to remote control and admin within the session. When they create the session, that will create a link and they can click send session to users and that will populate the chat for the customer. Let's take a look in ScreenMe console at the session data that was captured. So this is the session that we actually just ran. If I click on that, we can see the information such as when the session was created, the duration and when it ended and also session pin if the session was recorded, which this one was, and the termination reason. We can also look at the session log. So the session log shows all the events that happened during that session. So things like remote control was granted, that we did a file transfer, that we took a screenshot, and what those files was called. So you have a complete audit trail of what happened in that session. We also write back the system information. So that was the hardware details. There's no personally identifiable information in there. This is just information about the hardware that we connected to and the operating system. And then there's also the files that are associated with the session. So we have the MP4 of the video recording and also a copy of the file that we transferred to the customer. Thank you for watching this video and if you'd like to see a full demo please contact us or visit screenmeet.com